Well, you've got two sides again. You've got the white hats and the black hats. Now, obviously, the black hats um, are anti any disclosure whatsoever because they're, they're feeding their own ends. It, they agreed. They want everything kept in the in the dark. The white hats are in a very awkward position because they want to end all the secrecy. They want disclosure to begin, but at the same time, they realise that it's probably never going to happen. It's an onion skin. You peel up that first layer where someone's going to stand up and say, <coughs> yes, um, other intelligences exist and they've been interacting with this planet for a very long time. But you can't just leave it there because people are then going to ask, oh, OK, what about these abductions we've been hearing about? And what about this? And you've, you've literally got to start un unpeeling that onion and as each layer goes down, the government's going to get more and more into real deep doo doo, mm -hmm. and so they don't have any sort of disclosure to begin with because it's going to open Pandora's box. They can't just leave it as yes, uh, ET's here. They're great. They're going to help. They're going to do this and do that, and everyone's going to go away happy. And that's the end of the story. It, it it isn't. It's going to open so many other doors that people can demand answers to so many things. And then we're going to get into experimentation. We're going to get into mind control. We're going to get into the black budgets. <coughs> we're going to get into where all these billions and billions of dollars gone. Where's this? Where's that? And why haven't we have access to this technology where we're not raping this world of fossil fuels? We can all live in, in a nicer, cleaner environment with free energy. Well, it won't exactly be free, but it'd be a damn sight cheaper than fossil fuels. <laughs> um, it's going to lead to so many different things. They didn't begin disclosure. So it's being left as we are becoming aware ourselves by way of the media, which is being sort of controlled by the public education program anyway, of seeing, I mean, everyone knows, um, to, you know, you ask anyone in the street, you know, they, they, they've obviously seen at least one alien uh, invasion film of one war of the worlds or whatever. oh absolutely yeah yeah everyone is so um um up with the whole idea of aliens <coughs> UFOs, and all the rest of it so it's nothing new so we're all used to that but the trouble is um we're not going to officially disclose we will leave it to ourselves we'll see all these films and there's so many coming out in the last few years um you know that we're all going to get invaded by flesh-eating zombie-type aliens and God knows what else. We're all used to that, so it won't come as a bit of a shock when someone says, um, well, we've, we've got this officially produced film, which is going to detail all the stuff that's been picked up by uh, gun cameras and God knows what else, and uh, see what you make of it. So you don't see a scenario where we're going to have a decloaking over major American cities and they're going to present themselves to us? I don't think that that's necessary anymore. Um, I don't either. No. Um, now, another touchy subject we've got here is um, E.T. among us already. They're walking the streets. They're here now. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> now because the scientists and all the officials have said, I mean, they portrayed them in so many films, that every alien is going to be one of these nasty looking things you see in uh, <laughs> Independence Day or War of the Worlds or whatever, but what if these OPI were either naturally human looking or they could um, present themselves on our planet as humans anyway, so they're walking among us. Absolutely, and, and I think that that may be the most difficult thing for the average person to wrap their mind around as they become aware of the assimilation that's occurred with humanity of off-planet beings. Mm. It goes into one more s little side road I want to take you down here, which has mm -hmm. to do with hybridization programs. Obviously, genetic harvesting, genetic testing, and modification of human beings has been going on as an ongoing part of the abduction scenario. We have abundance of evidence. I have personal evidence of encounters with beings that are what I guess we would call star children or hybrids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> that's probably working on two sides again. Uh, we've got the, the hybrids that are literally um, a mixture of OPI and humans. Then you've got those that have been genetically tampered with by the military. Um, yes. Using both OPI and human cells. You, it's, it's an area of genetics that we've got to be very, very careful with. Um, certainly, hybrids do exist. Um, I'm, I mean, I can say back in the 90s when I was knocking out my original documents, I had so many callers, phone callers, people knocking on the door. I had so many visitors here. Uh, it, it was a, 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 you know, an everyday thing, morning, noon, and night, seven days a week, between 94 and 2000. Uh-huh. And some of the people I, well, loosely termed people, I had knocking on my door after ringing and saying, can I come along and have a chat with you? Um, there were one or two instances where the person or being I sat and spoke with was certainly not uh, a bog standard human. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was pretty sure on one occasion that I was addressing someone who came from a very, very long way away. Well, and again, that that was what was relayed to me by Bob Dean as well, that you could be sitting on an airplane beside somebody and he's basically said as much. Um, they will present themselves to you mm-hmm. in a certain way that you understand that they are not what you would call your uh, standard off the assembly line human being. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I, I can relate to that totally. Yeah. The, the people I've, I've, I've seen here time and time again it, yeah i've no problem with that whatsoever but the general public would i mean this that they're, they're so conditioned now that um you say it used to be the typical gray that they were conditioned with but uh, after a certain time we've seen nothing but these really strange looking um alien types that you say to joe public well what does an alien look like and it, it's either going to be the grey, or more likely, this hideous-looking thing that makes a very, very strange noise. I, I don't know about you. I've had encounters uh, with beings that were rather brief, but my encounter with them and my intuitive sense was immediately, this is this is a person, this is a hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, and these encounters on a number of occasions to me have seemed almost staged. It's like they were showing themselves to me. Yeah, yeah. Now that, yeah, well, that, that would be part of the course. That would be um, the way it worked here. Um, similar, I mean, I was, as I said, so many people were contacting me. It was ridiculous. But now and again, someone would ring up in a nice, quiet, polite voice. Uh, I'm such and such. Could I? you know, come and use some of your time, could we just have a chat? And the person would outwardly look quite quite normal, quite human, but once you're seated and you start talking and you're a bit more comfortable, a bit more relaxed, you start notice some subtle differences. Maybe the eyes are a certain shape or a certain colour, or the irises are slightly... You're trying to fathom it out. It's yeah, slightly, that's one of the things yeah. that's a giveaway yeah. is the eyes. It, it's all the all the small but subtle differences, and you and and then you you, you start hearing um, before you've spoken, before you've you know you you've got a question lined up, you've already got this little voice in your head that's answering that question. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you think, my God, I can hold a, a mental conversation with this person here yes. and now. And you both look at each other, and there's that smile, mm-hmm. very subtle smile. They know. You know, you know, really, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, I'm going to bring us forward a little bit into recent events and just skip over a couple of things, get your takes on them, because a lot of things to me are connecting and you've been so generous with your time. I, I, I again, thank you. And I don't, no want to, I, I don't want to be uh, uh, too presumptuous of you uh, recently. Um, can maybe we can speak a little bit about this the gulf of aden iran iraq and so-called stargates ah right okay um well then again 
the the guy to actually speak to regarding the, the Gulf of Aden would be um, Aaron, um, because he seemed to have come out with so much information. Now, I built up a habit over the years to not take in everything that's uh, been put out there by way of either interviews or on forums. Mm -hmm. I have a glimpse here and there, but I won't go out of my way to actually go into any great detail. Right. Now, now Aaron probably is a, is, is a great bloke, but for one reason or another, I just can't get into all Well, the Aaron things. has disappeared. Aaron is no longer oh. on the public scene. He, he went... Um, he went deep a couple of months oh, ago. Yeah. Okay. And I think he was on the record with Camelot. And I think anybody that saw and yeah. heard that needs, oh. uh, if you have discernment, you're going to know how many grains of salt you want to take with what Aaron had to say. And I have no problem saying that. I like the guy. Um, I sort of declined to interview him largely because I felt like he was on record and anything that we would have added to it would have just been repetition. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but as far as, um, let's see, more recent events uh, in the Middle East, um, I've mentioned over over the years that uh, the, the American interest in certain areas in the Middle East is yes. not, just the, not just the oil, even though that's, that's, that's a nice little thing to have, control over the oil, but also there is a linked uh, stargate between Iraq and Iran. Now, obviously, if the Americans can have some sort of access or control over both of those nations, their aim is to try and actually access and have control over that Stargate. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be easy because the Iranians know it's there. And they're obviously not going to be too, too happy with the Americans taking control of it. Well, there's the persistent rumors of... Uh our last excursion going into Baghdad and sacking the Baghdad Museum, which seems to have contained some um, objects that were coveted by the Western power elites as well, which mm -hmm. I suspect are also connected to potentially some uh, maybe ancient alien type artifacts. Yeah, yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah. Um, kind of, yeah, go ahead, Barry. Well, because the Americans now have the, well, <laughs> I nearly put my foot on it there. The Americans have has some control in Iraq, but not the control that they actually wanted or envisaged years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, to get to that Stargate, they've literally got to have full control of Iraq. So it's not really going to happen anytime soon. So they've had to make do with what they found in that museum. <sighs> Are you familiar with what Peter Moon detailed in Transylvania Sunrise about the, um, uh, I will say, alien trove inside of a mountain in Romania near Transylvania? I know of it. Okay. But I don't think I can comment with any validity on it. Well, the reason I ask you that is because it is alleged that that connects as well to Iran and Iraq in sort of a tangential way that, in fact, there may actually be a series of gates that connect and that may, in fact, themselves be an array of gates uh, that would open up a larger presence. That's, yeah, that, that's feasible because there are a number of um, natural gates scattered all around the planet. So, and I, yeah, that would be surprising. me. I ask you that because of what Duncan O'Finian has disclosed on uh, the shows that I did with him last last spring where he talked about what was going on at CERN as well where they're basically uh, attempting to open a portal oh right yeah yeah so there, and again there's a lot of connections these are again like we talked about earlier these are like all the little puzzle pieces that in our spare time we sit and push around to try and make a bigger picture because obviously we don't have the facts but we have enough intuition and enough on the table that we can look at it Mm. Well, I can add uh, just a snippet of uh, information that the British were, in brackets, messing around with something back in the 80s underneath Salisbury Plain in order to try and open uh, the, the portal, the gate, whatever name you want to give it, which is in that particular area. Uh, they came unstuck. 
and the last I heard was they were seeking some sort of help from the Americans. After that, it all went quiet. <laughs> what, they got themselves in a little too deep there? Uh, I think they got themselves <laughs> up to their neck in, you know what, yeah, and required some help from uh, outside, yeah. <laughs> 